sonnig, haben nicht viel zu tun gehabt, sehr Spaß schön. gehabt. Das ist das Schöne am Fernsehen, dass man nicht arbeiten muss. Also manchmal muss man tierisch viel arbeiten, das sind 16 Stunden Tage und dann äh, ist danach total fertig. Aber gestern haben wir auch 10 Stunden gedreht und sind dann noch 5 Stunden nach Berlin zurückgekommen. Gut, fangen wir von vorne an. Ja. Du bist ja Kameramann, ne? Mhm. Und ähm, warum bist du Kameramann geworden? Bilder machen. Also ich habe mit Fotografie angefangen als, als Kind. Wer, wer weiß warum, weil es mir gefallen hat. Das heißt, du Super 8 Filme gedreht. Hm? Du hast die Kamera geschenkt bekommen als Kind? Oder? Genau, ich habe ein Foto, ich habe ich hab mir ein Fotoapparat gewünscht und die Super 8 Kamera habe ich später zufällig geschenkt bekommen. Und da habe ich eben Filme entdeckt. Ja. Und, und gleich auch irgendwie Geschichten erzählt. Also nicht einfach so die Familie gefilmt, sondern auf der allerersten 3 Minuten Super 8 Rolle ist eine kleine Handlung, wo mein Bruder auf den Schaukel runterspringt und sich verletzt und so. Also ja. Also da wurde Keine auch der, der Regisseur und der Drehbuchautor gleich Alles in einer Person, gekriegt. natürlich. Filmemacher. Deswegen okay. kam ich später nach Deutschland und dachte, hier kann man Filme machen. Ach, das war nicht in Deutschland. Wo war das? Nee, ich bin in England geboren, aufgewachsen, zur Schule gegangen, habe dort studiert, bin dann erst nach Deutschland gekommen. Warum? Nach Berlin. Ja, Filme, um Filme zu machen. Also ich dachte, man kann hier Filme machen, so wie ich das, äh, so wie ich Theater studiert habe, in der Gruppe, alles improvisiert, jeder macht etwas und alle zusammen kreieren ein Theaterstück. Dachte ich, so kann man auch Filme machen und so kann man in Deutschland vor allen Dingen Filme machen, weil Fassbinder, Herzog, das, war so, das waren so die Filme, die mich äh, interessiert haben damals. Also vor allem Herzog, also hat mich sehr interessiert. Warum? Herzog? Das hat mich angesprochen, also ich weiß nicht, das ja, war irgendwie denn, poetisch. Ich habe Agera gesehen im Fernsehen, als ich so, keine Ahnung, 14 war oder so. Und ähm, das war das erste Mal, dass ich das Gefühl hatte, Film ist mehr als nur Geschichte, Film ist mehr als nur irgendwie eine Handlung erzählen. Das ist Poesie, das ist kräftige Bilder. Ich habe die Handlung irgendwie nicht so richtig verstanden oder was ich überhaupt Agera, wollte. Zorn Agera, Gottes. der Zorn Gottes, ja, ja mit Kinski im, im Urwald. Also, aber da sind so starke Bilder drin, also wenn die Affen nachher auf dem Floß sind am Schluss. Ja, also, oder am Anfang sowieso, wenn sie diese die, die so Schlange von Menschen den Berg hochklettert. Das hat mich wirklich, kann ich mich wirklich erinnern, angesprochen, dass ich gemerkt habe, dass das Film ist mehr als nur Handlung. Ja. Wie fandst du das Remake, Bad Lieutenant, von ihm? Äh, muss ich noch angucken. Ach so. Ja. Habe ich vor, weil ich habe ja Berichte gehört vom Dreh, das klingt super interessant, ja, aber habe ich, super wie so oft, zu viel Arbeit, also viele Filme verpasst man einfach im Kino, gerade solche Filme, die nur vor ein paar Wochen im Kino sind, ja. das ist schade. Ja. Ähm, wie waren denn deine Anfänge als Kameramann? Du hast mir vorhin erzählt, äh, auf einer Kanal irgendwas, hm. erzähl mal. Ja. Ähm, ich war also in, in Berlin und habe entdeckt, dass man eben nicht einfach so Filme machen kann, wie ich mir das vorgestellt habe, sondern es ist sehr arbeitsteilig ist. Ich habe mich trotzdem an der DFFB beworben, aber die erste Bewerbung war schlecht. Die zweite fand ich ganz gut, aber ich bin trotzdem nicht drauf gekommen. Und eigentlich war ich drauf und dran, Berlin zu verlassen, als ich erfahren habe, dass es hier eine Ausbildung Was, wie alt? zum Kameraassistenten gab. Das war, da war ich so Mitte 20. Okay. Ja. Und ähm, diese Ausbildung zum Kameraassistent, da war die Voraussetzung, dass man ja Praktikum macht. Das habe ich in einem kleinen Kopierwerk gemacht. Da gab es altes, ausrangiertes äh, Material, also Kamera und Schnittplatz. Da haben wir halt ein paar Versuche gemacht, ein bisschen unsere eigene Berichterstattung, unsere eigene Abendschau gemacht und das beim offenen Kanal gesendet. Also, und dann? Das waren die, wirklich die allerersten Sachen. Dann kam eben diese Ausbildung zum Kameraassistenten, parallel die Arbeit bei Rias TV. Also das war ein großes Glück, dass Rias TV angefangen hat, dass die junge Leute gesucht haben, dass es viele Öffnungen gab. Das war 89, ne? Das war 88, genau. Also vor der Mauer und dann kam die Mauer. Vor der Wende, genau. Ja. Ich war mit, dem, mit dieser Ausbildung zum Kameraassistenten 89 fertig im Sommer und war drauf und dran, Berlin zu verlassen, weil hier war nichts los. Ich konnte ein bisschen bei Rias arbeiten nach wie vor. Ganz selten mal beim ZDF als Assi oder beim SFB im Studio. RTL Sat 1 war ganz klein damals. Das war ja, das klein groß, ne? Mhm. Und, und selbst im Sommer war die Wende nicht wirklich absehbar. Also erst als die Mauer aufging in, in Ungarn, im September war das, glaube ich, da hat man gespürt, da bewegt sich was. Okay, let's do a little English. Let's do a little English for our American English, okay. people. Yeah. Um, so, and how did you end up uh, being taught by Michael Ballhaus? Okay, so it's, it's a long story. It's <laughs> cut it short, cut it short. I've been here. But <laughs> don't cut it, it's uncut. No, no, so, it's so. uncut. Uh, cut it myself. I, I go to bed, so please. Uh, <laughs> no, I can, I can do the short version. Because um, I've been here for 30 years, you know, so there's a lot to tell. But um, well, I started well. doing news, of course. I mean, because I, uh, I had this qualification to work as a camera assistant when the war came down in 19, November 89. 
and I used that opportunity just to start shooting. I wasn't in. I had the the option of being a camera assistant uh, on movies and standing next to the camera, watching what the cameraman does, learning by doing, um, or shooting video, but shooting myself. And I was more interested in creating my own images, even if they were on video. Of course, I knew film is much better quality. You can do better stuff with film. But I was more interested in doing my own stuff rather than watching people what do theirs. Quite so um, I started with news. That carried on to uh, current affairs, short pieces for television, and then the, the music video start, uh, industry started up in Germany. There were a lot of opportunities in 91, 92 to shoot music videos. And, you did that, uh, right? I did yeah. that, yeah. That was the first sort of creative thing I did. That got me back to shooting film as well, because I'd learned film at the school I went to and had been shooting video for two or three years, and shooting clips got me back to shooting 16 How many later. videos did you do? About 25, I think. And at this time, I was still looking for inroads into um, film, feature film or, or TV movies, uh, narrative filmmaking, yeah. which is still, you know, which has what I'd actually planned to do when I came to Berlin. In the meantime, sort of 10 or 11 years had passed and I noticed it was difficult to make inroads because I hadn't followed the traditional route yeah. of being a camera assistant. I'd gone off on my own and was doing documentaries, I was doing music videos, I was doing a little bit of commercials, but I was not finding any way of getting into feature films. And then I even thought of going to LA. I knew a couple of people, yeah, of uh, an English guy, an American girl who uh, had achieved a certain amount of success in their fields in Hollywood, that if you have a certain amount of experience, you can make it there. Of course. You know, it's not out of the question. And I was really seriously thinking of doing that when I heard that Michael Ballhaus, the great cinematographer, uh, was starting a film school, or, or starting a cinematography class at a film school which didn't have one yet in Hamburg. So, you know, I was quite happy living in Berlin. I didn't really want to move. It would only have been for the sake of my yeah. career. I didn't like the thought of going to LA as a place. Yeah. And so, yeah, why go to Hollywood if Hollywood's coming to Hamburg? Yeah. So it's smoggy too. I, so. moved to, <laughs> I just moved a couple of hundred kilometers up to Hamburg for a couple of years. Hamburg is nice. Uh, it's a nice enough place. Yeah. I mean, I was glad to come back to Berlin because Berlin is a much more vibrant, yeah. interesting yeah. city. You know, I mean, you, are, you you can get through most of what Hamburg has to offer in six to eight yeah, months. So back to Ballhaus. Yes. <laughs> and I learned a lot from Ballhaus. It was a postgraduate course, which means you know, it, was direct, it was aimed at people who already had a certain amount of experience or training, not first, you know, people, when you start as a film student, you normally don't know an awful lot, can't do much. It takes four or five years to finish the course. In this case, it was just a two-year course aimed at people with enough experience to start shooting immediately. The first project we did was shooting a five-minute short movie for the um, directing students. When was that after that the beginning? How long was the time until? I, uh, that was from 96 to 98, two years. Okay. Yeah, so I started in 96. And the first project, there were six students in each class. It was very, very small groups. It was great. There were six directors, six cinematography students. And we all paired up. Each person, there wasn't any competition. Each person, each director did a film, and each director had to select one of the cinematography students to shoot it. And I also, we all assisted each other, you know, as camera assistants or electricians or gaffers. With and you? And at that point, he wasn't there yet. He was, oh. he was still busy shooting primary colors. With Travolta, no, right? No, sorry, no, that was later. Um, he was shooting a different film. Um, the Monkey Outbreak. thing? Outbreak, I Monkey, think. Monkey, yeah, yes. with Peter. Yes, yeah. with Outbreak. And um, he, no, it wasn't. It was the it was uh, Air Force One. That was what he was doing. Peterson too. Yeah, yeah, it was Peterson. It was it was he was shooting Air Force One when the course started, and he came along later. He he communicated with us by by that was before, of course, sort of before the days of the internet almost. It was we got faxes from him. Really charming little letters. He said, "Watch it this, was like internet. Watch it was this like, film. Ah. It was a bit like that. Yeah. Okay, watch this film." Uh, here's an idea for a short project, you know, shoot some footage for me. And never, together, I want to get to know you. We hadn't met him yet. Yeah. No. I, think, well, I think he was there at the uh, um, entrance exam, but I haven't seen him since then. Or in and then he came and what happened? And he came later and he saw our stuff and he loved it. He thought it was great. And he was, really? He's a very friendly, very charming yeah. man. And he that, really yeah. uh, looks at what you can do and tries to develop that rather than other teachers we also had at the school who will convince you that you can't do anything and then build up from, from nothing. You know, he was much more in, into looking at what we could do. And, and yeah, last time you told me something about him, that he had like a tagline or like a headline mm, or something. Yes. What was that? Yes, one of the things, uh, one of his mantras really as a cameraman is that you never say no to the director. There's nothing you can't do as a cameraman. You know, that the, those, those words 
it can't be done. They, they can't pass your lips. You know? And he's right, and right? He's right, yes. I mean, there are some things that have to be done differently if you don't have enough budget. You know, I mean, he's coming from a Hollywood background, yeah. but not only. I mean, he came from a Hollywood background, yeah. which were very low budget films, you know, and they do some great stuff in those. He films. invented the whole camera movement of course, around yes, turning Dixon's. degree. That, that is something that initially started out as. You can't do that because there was a slope. You know, they, they, they had an idea. They, they thought of doing a 180 degree uh, tracking shot, and, and Fassbinder, crazy as always, said, "Why stop at 180? Let's do 360." Let's do round, yeah. And Balhas said, "Yes, but uh, it's on a slope." You know, and and if uh, at one end the tracks will be so high above the ground, your actors are going to have to climb across the tracks. It's you know? great. He said, "Leave that to me. That's you know, what uh, anything to do with the actors. That's my concern. You you uh, do your part of the job, and I'll work out how to do mine." Yeah. And in fact, I think they did leave a little gap, so it's not it's like 310, uh, 350 degrees, not 360. And it's a great shot because it's not just a 360. But the it's actors, so influential. It was so influential. Turn, yes, but if you look at it, the actors turn as well yeah. and turn the again, yeah. and you're totally disorientated. Yeah. And you know anyone can just take the camera and do a little spin. But it's about integrating it into the story. Yeah. It's about actually doing and it it's at actually a spot where it's a big sense. part of the story. Yeah. And it's also about coordination between the director and the cameraman. You know, because as a cameraman, I can have all sorts of ideas. If that doesn't match the director's vision, yeah. if that's not what he wants yeah. to do with the actors at that moment in this in the story, then. Yeah. And he's very open to that, right? He's very open to a director. He's very like. It's he seems what I, to what attract. I, I'd say he seems to attract directors in his best work. I mean, he also has stories about directors he didn't get on with yeah. at all. You can see that yeah. Barry Sonnenfeld, Wild Wild, Wild, West. Wild West. Exactly. Oh my goodness! Great yeah. example. Yes, they hated. Well, they didn't hate each other. Sonnenfeld admired. They Bauhaus didn't like to work with each greatly, other. Greatly, but Bauhaus hated doing. Yeah, of course, film. it was bullshit. Yes. The movie is like the last yes. trash. his ever. style as well. You know, I mean, Bauhaus, they're, they're totally yeah. opposite. But Baron it doesn't Sonnenfeld matter. Sonnenfeld it doesn't matter. Used to be a cameraman as well. Yeah. Sonnenfeld, he puts the camera right up here for a close up. Yeah, but he wants to be a star. And and Bauhaus puts it back. Here yeah. on a long lens, and that's two the totally different ways of working yeah. and, and aesthetic. And what, what did you, good. you, your soul, your brain, yes. everything learn from him? <laughs> and what we learned from him, I mean, no, you, we, not we, you, we, yes. I, okay, I think it was a common experience for all for <laughs> the six of us because it was a very tight knit group, you know, it was a very uh, he, um. So he came and he started off by apologizing that although he was going to stay for a few weeks, after that he'd have to return to America. That was primary colors, to yeah. shoot primary colors. And um, if he ended up by saying, you know, if I can't be here often enough to teach you properly, you'll have to come to where I am, which is in Hollywood, and organized a field trip. Um, we all, so we went in pairs, two at a time, for two weeks. Two and just to be on the set. To with Travolta and Thompson, Tra right? Emma Thompson, John Travolta, Mike Nichols was the director, um, just to take part in, not to take part, to, we weren't allowed to take part, we weren't allowed <laughs> to touch anything, but to be there. Yeah. yeah. And we're in, very close to the director, very close to the but director. But it was like he said, right? observe how he works and how an American film set works. And that's the one thing I learned most from that course. And it's know, totally professional, isn't it? Two weeks, yes. It's a difference. It's yeah. day and night, the difference. That's why they Germany produce the movies and, they and produce. America. Yes, yeah. I think. The level of professionalism right through to the PAs and the people yeah. who are just starting out, everyone knows their job. It's yeah. not like, you know, can you do this for me or can you help me that? I mean, that's quite nice on German sets that people help each other out, but it's it's not as professional as the Americans. Yeah, yeah. You really, that's what I mean. Every person knows their job and you always yeah. know if something doesn't get done, who's responsible And everybody for knows the reason why. why. Yes, it's exactly. done right now. Yeah. In Germany, you have discussions yeah. on the set. Yes. Why are you doing this? Yes, that's why, true. Why, yes. why should we do that? Yeah. 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 It's a very hierarchical system, of course. You could even call it a dictatorship, but I think that's how it needs to be done to make yeah. good films. Yes. And, and the other thing we learned was, or I learned, was um, that it's about storytelling. You know, it's not about technology. It's not about techniques. It's not. A, it's even not about style. It's about uh, finding the heart of the story, finding what's going on between the actors, the emotions, how to tell a story in a cinematic way. Yeah. And that that was his. And, and that is, whenever I approach a script these days, and also when I shoot documentary films. And that's what I'm always thinking about. You know, I'm yeah. always thinking about what is actually what interests me about these characters. What do I find? You know, so that informs a lot of your decisions about where to place the actors, where to place the camera, uh, how to light the scene, uh, whether to move the camera or whether not to move the camera. You know, that, all these things. You just did like Hensel and Gretel, the yes, Christmas stuff. Yes. Um, how did you use what you learned from him or after him for that? That was quite a 
high-end television thing yes. with Christmas and, yes. and with the big actors and blah. Yes. So tell me. The interesting thing about this version of Hansel and Gretel was that it introduced a few modern elements as well. And um, I would say, you know, it, it gave us an opportunity to be a bit more extreme with the lighting setups and the, the style of cinematography than you normally would be on a, on a fairy tale film. You know, they're normally more traditionally done. And this one, because the director likes that too, is very extreme in the sense, in terms of Dutched angles, in terms of high contrast in the lighting, in terms of the lighting inside the, the witch's house is always pulsing the whole time and moving in different colors. And, and these were all decisions which, again, were informed by reading the story and talking to the director about and being open to what his idea of the style what style the film should be. But it's yeah. one story, right? There's no flashback or dream sequence or stuff no, like that. No, there's a new character. That's in, the, the, in, the, in the original fairy tale, the father stays at home until the children come back. They escape on their own and come back. Yeah. And in this, sto yeah, in this story, to give the father a larger part, he actually goes out and looks for them and then he meets someone in the woods who is actually like a sort of twin sister to the, uh, to the witch that, is, wow. how, uh, that, has, that has captured Hansel and Gretel in their house. Yeah. And it's, um, but the story is basically the same. It's got more to do with the aesthetics. Anya Kling is not a, uh, you know, a, um, a witch with a big wart on her nose or. But she's beautiful, she right? Look ugly. She looks beautiful. She has very extravagant costumes, and she, she, uh, you know, enchants the Did children. Did you see the whole thing yet? Yeah, I'm just doing the, the color correction this week. So oh, right, that's I, what yes, you are. So I, I actually saw it properly for the first time just, just the day before and? yesterday. Oh, is it? Cool. And it's turned out great, yes. yes, cool. yes it's, it's How's the music? It's Who's doing the music? I, expect. I haven't heard that yet. I've only ah. seen the rough cut, uh, or not the rough cut, but the, the avid play out, and the music comes later. The music and the... Because um, there are a lot of special effects as well, so we need to do the color correction fairly early. So the CGI effects. Special effects, yes. Ah. CGI no, guys no. And you did green screen, right? We did a couple of green screen shots. Oh, was that? And that's that's just fun or work? No, green screen is usually just a lot of work. It's just yeah. making sure you get it right, right and right. making sure and f and making sure it doesn't look uh, different to the rest of the footage. That's the biggest yeah, challenge. Yeah. yeah, finding the you know because you have to, but um, I don't enjoy doing is that. Is that done yet? The, the the green screen? No, no, okay. no. I haven't seen the results of that yet. So, what's your favorite movie? The favorite movie. The biggest, the one, the, one. <laughs> the only one, there isn't No, one. not the only one, but the um, one. I mean, I, I really, really, really love Manhattan, uh, Woody Allen. Manhattan. Really? You love yes, Woody Allen? Yes, yes. Oh, oh, I like Woody Allen. I like some of Woody Allen. I mean, I like the films Woody Allen made about 20 to 30 years yeah. ago. No, uh, Midnight in Paris was... Was it Midnight? No, is it called? I have no idea. This Midnight, is a new one. Midnight in Paris is great. I mean, it's his first it's one of the new really ones, right? good film. It's the, new, yeah, it's the latest yeah. one. Not anymore. There's a new one coming out now, but there was in Cannes, I think. Yeah. Uh, but before that... It was his latest film, and that's the first good film he's made in a very, very long time. No, I like Manhattan, I like Annie Hall, I like uh, Hannah and her sisters. Um, really? The Purple Rose of Cairo. So you uh, like Pharaoh? Stardust Memory. No, it's about what he was doing at that time. It's about the combination of serious topics with, with comedy. But you like the actresses too? Mia Farrow? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not keen on Mia Farrow. I like Diane Keaton, yeah. but uh, I'm not that keen on Mia Farrow. Okay. Yeah. But I think the film, one film that made a great impression on me, apart from Fitzcarraldo, was actually the first film I remember seeing in the cinema, which was Kubrick 2001. Yeah. And because the, the, my dad took us up to London to see mm -hmm. that uh, in, in a theatre. And Hardcore widescreen? It's in Cinemascope. Yeah, yeah, it's huge widescreen. You just used to... We'd, I think we'd only just got a TV. I don't think for the first <laughs> sort of eight white. years of my life... And then douche. I only saw television at my grandmother's house. Yeah. yeah, and then she got a new one. We inherited her TV and had this little sort of... Uh, Telephone. I uh, call for you. One second. Uh, Hallo Frau Rowe, wir drehen gerade das Interview mit Ihrem Namensvetter, Christopher <lacht> Rowe. Achso, Entschuldigung, nee, ich muss mich nur mal melden, weil du hast ja mehrmals probiert. Ja, ich melde mich, wenn ich fertig bin mit dem Interview, ja? Bis gleich. <lacht> Tschüss. So, this was the German Rowe. Yes, the German Rowe. Ja. <lacht> Um, and yeah, uh, so it used, yeah, used to watching television on, just started watching television, you know, on a little black yeah, and white yeah. screen. And then to see um, this cinemascope widescreen color image for the first time. Well, the, the thing that actually that impressed me most was the, the uh, Tom and Jerry before that. They really? showed a Tom and Jerry cartoon, yeah, right, which was also widescreen and color. <laughs> that was, my God, you know. Well, yeah. But no, 2001 made a great impression on me. Uh, you, you still know, like the movie? Uh, uh, when you watch yeah, it today? I think it's a bit long-winded when you say yeah. it today. 
could do with a bit of overrated, totally cu overrated. cutting. It is a bit overrated, but at the time it was, you know. Well, it's influential. I mean, this I know, was, yeah. I think it was made, it was made before. 60 something, moon, right? Yeah, but it was made before the moonshot, wasn't it? It was made before Neil Armstrong. I think it was released around about the same time as Neil Armstrong walked the moon, and that, that fascinated me yeah. as a kid as well, anyway. I remember. It was new, the whole like, yes. space thing was totally and new. And seeing it like that and, and feeling so much as though you're inside the ship you know, in the way, weightlessness. I mean, he, the nice thing is he takes a lot of time at the beginning of the film just to show the spaceships yeah. moving through space yeah. to the With sound music of the and, stuff, yeah. and uh, inside the ship, you know, and the, I think little things like you're reading a list this long of instructions how to use the uh, He must be, oh, he must, um, he must have been a piece of work on the set, right? Oh, yes. break. Oh my yes. God, like 50 takes or something? I, uh, yeah, or more you get to go. Oh my God, what? Yes. I mean, how? No, I actually had Why? an interesting Why? story. Uh, his very, uh, it impressed me because it was his very first film. I mean, okay, later on in life, he had yeah. a reputation. People knew what they were dealing with. I heard that on his very first film, he told the cameraman, you know, uh, lay your tracks here. This is the camera. This is the shot, 35 millimeter lens. And he went away and did something else, you know, like it used to be in Hollywood, you know, and you probably had two hours to set up, and yeah. then he came back, and the cameraman had gone further back and taken a longer lens, and he said, so actually the, the framing was the same, but of yeah. course that affects how much or how yeah, little yeah, you yeah. see how of the background. See, yeah. and, and Kubrick said, that's not what I asked for. He said, yeah, the cameraman said, it's okay, it's the same shot, it's just a bit easier for me. He said, no, he said, that's not what I asked for. Lay the tracks back where I set them. Get your 35 millimeter lens on. I'll come back again in two hours' time. You know, for a first-time director talking to a yeah. probably I don't remember who the DP was, but probably a you know well-known cameraman, yeah. and to be that convinced that there's a difference between this shot and that shot, even though what's in the shot, you know, in terms of the content yeah, I mean, is actually the same. You can to be exaggerate. That short, yes, but to be that. I'm talking 50 takes concern. here. 50 takes between yes. uh, Tom and Nicole. Sure. I've heard about shot. that, yes. I mean, what? And it's ridiculous. What do you want? <laughs> yes. what, do you, what do you want from me? Like, Apparently, hello? someone said, was it himself or someone else, that it's just about wearing the actors down, you know, that was his theory. That Why once the they're worn then? down, then things start coming out which they can't control. I don't like more that. Authentic. I don't believe in it either. I don't like that. Though. I like the way Hitchcock did it. Hitchcock uh -huh. was, I think he was this very... He invented so Hitchcock much for movies. Was that he was extremely precise and knew yeah. exa exactly what he wanted. And he made and movies. That's, it's not yes. that he didn't make a good movie. But that's what Bell has talked about, said about Scorsese as well. He said, yeah. you know, Scorsese would come on into the first discussions uh, with a storyboard or with notes and sign yeah. the script. He knew exactly the way yeah. he wanted to break and the, the characters shots down. Too. He didn't do coverage, you know, yeah. where you'd put the camera here and there and everywhere and then look in the edit yeah. to see how it fits together. No. He knew, this is the shot I want, yeah. that's the shot I want. Shoot it, done. Yeah, if the, if the shot's good and if the actors are okay, then we don't need to yeah. repeat it and we don't need coverage. Yeah. That's exactly so. how it should be done, I because think. Because film language, you know, where you place the camera, what type of shot you do, is all about how you're telling your story. You know, it's not... Um, just not something you decide later on in the edit. Hast du mir nicht gesagt? Didn't you say last time that you liked Apocalypse Now? Yeah. yeah. And Manhattan is like completely different. Yeah. But these are all, interestingly, they're, they're all films around about, that came out around about the same time. Yeah. I think it's got yeah, a lot Oscar to do with Run, the experience. For example, Manhattan, I remember I'd seen, I went to university, I discovered Woody Allen, the funny films, you know, the first yeah. films he made. These were reruns at university of. Um, Uh, Love and Death and Sleeper and, and all the other Insect the Sex films, thing, right? The films he made before Annie Hall. Yeah. Bananas and stuff. Everything mm -hmm. you wanted to know about sex, all this, which were just funny films. Yeah. yeah. And, and then I went back home and then Manhattan was in the theatres and I, I even took my brother, my younger brother <laughs> along and said, you've got to see this, Woody Allen's great, really funny films. And there we were both sitting in, in watching Manhattan. And Manhattan it was like funny. completely different, right? It was completely black different. Black and white. Yes, it was black and white. A little drama. <laughs> But uh, even the opening sequence, I mean, Gordon Willis is the cameraman, you know, the black and white images of New York to the set to Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. Is, yeah. is it won the Oscar, sequence. right, Manhattan? I against think. Apocalypse, I, I think. I don't remember. I think. It's possible. Yeah, it was all around about the same time. Yeah. It was 79, yeah. my first year at university. It was yeah. The thing about Apocalypse Now was the, co the comparison to The Deer Hunter, which is also... Um, let's make, time. cut a long story short, we mm. have to finish because yes. of our clip length and mm. the uncut. We could, like, talk forever, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the movie situation today, worldwide? Mm. With 3D and mm. all the advertising and all the pushing of the big studios <laughs> and the indie studios, how they are, how it is On in the Germany? One hand, they're through the, you know, the small 
digital cameras, which still have a good aesthetic, are now available, which they weren't before. So uh, the indie scene has become very, very um, varied. You know, there are so many more opportunities these more days sources, for people yeah. to make their films. Even when I started out, there was much wider divide between professional equipment and amateur equipment. Nowadays, anyone can get a, a Canon 5D, they can get you know, Final Cut for their laptop, so you spend like 10 to 15,000 euros. To bring stuff to the movies. And you're able to produce a good quality movie that you mm -hmm. can actually show on the screen, you know, um, which is good. You know, I mean, uh, it gives people a lot of opportunities. The downside is that it's, it's hard to identify which are the good films. You know, if, if, if 15, or 20, for that. 15 or 20 films come out each week into the cinema, then who is going to see them all? I can't. I don't have time to view them all. So um, that's, I don't know. I don't know how, but it's better that the films are made and then people decide whether to see them in the cinema. You think Rather it's better than, now, the situation? I think so. On, ba on balance, I think it's better, although it's not, it has disadvantages. It's not all positive because a lot of, what do you think it's about 3D? It's harder to get noticed. Yeah. What do you think about 3D? I'm very f fascinated by 3D. Yeah. But the I'm movies very, are not good. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, um, at the moment, uh, it's the way of making extra money for the film producers. Yeah, yeah. That's and the only like, reason. It's like, there are very few directors out there. I think Cameron and Scorsese and Peter Jackson are probably the only ones who are really interested. Have you seen Hugo Cabaret? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, is it? It's good? a brilliant film. Yes. Yeah? Cool. I mean, okay. To see it. It's a matter. Yeah, it's it's a, some people don't like it uh, as far as the story Did you see goes. Tim I enjoyed the, the story. The Tintin stuff? No. Tintin? No? Yeah, Spielberg? I see that. Yeah. So you think it's okay? Um, I think if it's, if it's used as a new tool which gives filmmakers a new way of expressing themselves, and I'm sure that's what we'll see when, when The Hobbit comes around soon, yeah. uh, then it's a it's, it's great uh, advance. But it's only one arrow in the quiver. You, know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, you don't have to use it. It should never be, you know, like these days, once color was introduced, it became very difficult to carry on shooting black and white. I hope that it will never be the case that everything needs to be done in 3D because yeah. that's the only thing you can No, they sell. wanted Christopher Nolan you know, to do the Batman in 3D and he said no. Yeah, he's, he's a great, uh, he's great. advocate oh my God. of yeah. shooting on film. One of the yeah. few directors left who insists on shooting 35 and even 65 have millimeter you seen film. Inception is a brilliant film. Yeah, yes. I mean, I, I don't, love, don't say it. I, I have to see Christopher it. Nolan's work ever uh, since he's Memento. Great, yeah. uh, Memento. No, ever since one before. What's that following? I, yeah, I've heard about that. I haven't yeah, seen that. It's great. Memento it's was a student like, that, but very good. That, that I first Good, then reden wir wieder Deutsch und gehen aus dem Bild. Komm. Yeah, okay. Um, Aber ich habe noch so viel mehr zu erzählen. Hast du? Wir könnten noch Stunden machen. Ich weiß, wir könnten jahrelang ja. reden, und, äh, also, aber irgendwie klappt es ja nicht. Wir haben noch andere Termine. Oh, Mensch. Mensch.